guys welcome back to my channel and thank you so much for watching i'm so excited to be filming this video today i've never done anything like this before um today's gonna be a q and a so you guys are always snapchatting me and instagram messaging me questions regarding makeup um i just recently got engaged so i've been getting a lot of um questions about that so i just figured that i would sit down do a live feed on instagram and let you guys just ask me some questions that you've been wanting to ask me regarding whatever it is you want to ask me and i'd go ahead and answer them so i hope you guys are excited for this video if you're interested in watching this q a then just go ahead and keep on watching i'm gonna get this um live feed started right now jackie Look, I'm using the mug Jessica got me. Hello, hello, guys. Let's wait for a couple more people to join. Right at 8.30. Okay, guys. So let's wait for a couple more people to join. You guys can start asking questions if you want. By the way, look at this cup that my, uh, my cousin got me. I was like, it's only appropriate to use this cup right now, right? Mm -hmm. Who wants to ask the first question? So I've been using this foundation lately, the Estee Lauder Double Wear. I was talking about it the other day on Snapchat and Instagram. That's why somebody just asked me about it. Um, I was worried about this foundation because I have read a lot of reviews that say that this foundation has flashback in it because it has SPF in it. So I took some flash photography pictures the other night after I filmed with it and there was no flashback. It actually looked really, really, really good in pictures. So I don't know if people were saying that, but in my experience, it didn't have any flashback. I really liked it. But that was just me. Do you think it could be the MAC next to nothing you use that stopped the flashback? Actually, that is possible. I considered that. But that foundation is so, so, so thin. And it has such a light coverage. It's almost more of like a tinted moisturizer um, kind of vibe. Hey, big. So I thought about that, but I don't think it was that that caused it to not have flashback. Because on the contrary, that's actually really dewy. And it has like a, big, like a really intense glow to it. So I don't think it was that. Because I put a very thin layer of it. Um, but yes, that's a good question. I have not tried the foundation on its own yet, but I will definitely get back to you guys on that. What's the best foundation to use and not break out? Um, I guess it just kind of depends on what kind of skin you have. <sighs> Let me think. Um, for sure, don't use MAC Studio Fix. MAC Studio Fix is like, at least for me, like if I use MAC Studio Fix three days in a row, I'm breaking out everywhere. Um, I don't really break out much with foundations. It depends what kind of skin you have. Do you have more oily skin or more dry skin or more combination skin? Let me know what kind of skin you have. Who was it that asked that? It was Steph Zicardi. Let me know what kind of skin you have and I can give you more of a recommendation right there. Miss Leslie. I'm taking my notes, girl. <laughs> You have oily skin. Okay, so for oily skin, you definitely want to go to more of um, a, what's it called? A matte foundation. My personal favorite matte go-to foundation is the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte. This, to me, is just like, there is nothing like this. Like, if I know I'm going to be out all night and I want my makeup to last all night and look flawless all night, this is what I will use. Um, even on people that are oily, it really helps with oil breakout. And you don't have to set this with powder if you don't want to. If you're scared to look cakey and you're scared to put, like, um... What's it called? Powder on top of your foundation because you don't want to look too cakey. This is a good way to go because this dries down to kind of like a powdery finish. Um, so I would definitely say this. This has never made me break out. I use it on clients all the time and no one's ever had a problem with it. So this is a really good one. Best lasting lip brand. I love Anastasia, but their colors peel off really fast in my opinion. Okay, so I'm going to be honest with you. I'm kind of a bad person to ask that question to because... Um, I don't like liquid lipsticks. I don't like long lasting lipsticks. I'll wear them here and there, but I have very, very, very dry lips. So for me, it's hard to wear a liquid lipstick all the time. I really like regular lipstick and I like glosses, but I actually have really been loving. Um, I wish I had one here on my desk, but I don't. I'll grab it now. But um, the new Milani liquid lipsticks are really, really, really good. And I have worn those and they don't make my lips feel dry, but they last forever and it's from the drugstore it's like a great 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 um like price point because from the drugstore and they last really good and they have beautiful colors i'm trying to think what else i love the ofra liquid lipsticks to me those are really long lasting and um and they what's it called and they're not as drying either and what else i really like the ColourPop ultra satin lips that formula is a little bit different though it doesn't go completely down to a matte finish it's kind of like an in-between satin and like matte type finish but it's like a super long wearing lipstick but it's very hydrating so i really like those too so i would say my top three right now in this exact moment are the milani liquid lipsticks 
the Ofra liquid lipsticks and the ColourPop Ultra Satin Lips, not the Ultra Mattes. The ColourPop Ultra Mattes are a little dry for me. I still wear them here and there, but I don't enjoy it when I'm wearing it, does that make sense? Um, but I do really like their Ultra Satin Lip Formula. What's the best concealer for dark under eyes? Bye Bye Under Eye by It Cosmetics. That's like the best thing ever. The trick with Bye Bye Under Eye though, is that you have to just use a tiny, tiny, tiny little bit. Like you can only use a little bit right underneath, right where the darkest part um, of your eyes are. If you try to do like the whole triangle thing about my under eye, you're gonna look really crazy. But I like Bye Bye Under Eye to help cover up any darkness. And I've actually really been loving, um, I've been using this on every single client, this new, the Smashbox color correcting stick, the peach one. I use this and I put it right in the dark areas and shape tape. Shape tape is good too. My issue with shape tape is that it's a little drying. So sometimes it can like, if you have dry under eyes, it can make your under eyes kind of look a little cracky and crusty. You have to really hydrate your under eyes to use that, I have found but it's an amazing concealer. But this has been so good, the Smashbox Color Correcting Stick, it's the peach one. I just put this right in the area where I have a little bit of darkness so that my client has a little bit of darkness, um, blend it out, and then I put a concealer on top and it's super duper brightening. It's really, really, really good. Any wedding deeds? You must be so excited. When I was buying the house, I kept harassing, I kept harassing Chris about putting a ring on it. <laughs> oh my God, how funny. Yes, um, yes. I don't have a lot of wedding details yet, um, we do know, we are very excited, yes, um, and he caught me very off guard, which everyone thinks is so weird. Everyone's like, you guys have been together for so long, how did he catch you off guard? He just did, I wasn't expecting it, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but we are having like a really big engagement party um, now in like a couple months, and we're inviting like everybody, all of our family, our friends, just like everyone. Um, and then I think we're gonna do like a really small destination wedding in like a year, a year and a half but I'll definitely keep you guys updated with on that. I kind of started working on some of the engagement party stuff today. I kind of figured out how I want to decorate everything. Um, I spoke with a caterer today. Um, we started working on the DJ situation. What else did we do? That's pretty much it right now. So that's what's happening with that. Yes, I know you guys are excited for that. I'm excited too. I'm excited. Chris is a little bit scared. Chris is like, oh my God, he's crazy. He starts asking me, he's like, why are we talking about all this wedding stuff? Why are we talking about an engagement party? It's gonna be in like three or four months. And I'm like, honey, you can't plan a party. He's like, can't we just plan it like two weeks before? I'm like, no, it doesn't work like that. Like, no. I'm like, obviously you did not have a pizza. Obviously you didn't have a pizza. Is your, my, is your dad gonna DJ? <laughs> no, I, I didn't want to put it on your dad to DJ. I'm just gonna hire a DJ. That way your dad can actually come and enjoy and not be, you know, stuck there doing that the whole time. DJ Pepe. There's no one out there like DJ Pepe. That's my uncle. My uncle used to be a DJ. And he DJs sometimes at our parties. That's why they're saying that. <laughs> you should do a bridal makeup tutorial. Yeah, I totally will. And actually, a couple people have asked me, they're like, are you going to do your own makeup for your wedding? And the answer is 99.9%. .9 I'm sure that yes, I am going to do my own makeup for my wedding. Um, so I'll definitely do a tutorial of however I end up doing my makeup. I'm just really picky, guys. And like, I just feel comfortable with the way that I do my makeup and I just like it. What lipstick are you wearing? Is that a NYX one? No, it's not actually. This is one of my favorite lipsticks and this is like an oldie but a goodie. This is MAC S Alarm. It's one of their luster finish lipsticks, just a regular MAC lipstick. I love this red. I was in the hunt for the longest time for a red that was appropriate for daytime, like for the day. Cause it's really hard to wear like ruby woo or like a really intense bright red lip in the middle of the day. Like, I don't know. I'm not the type of person that can rock a bright red lip in the middle of the day, but that's just me. I wish I was. Jessica, yeah, my cousin keeps putting, oh my God, I love that cup. Who got you that cup? You got me that cup. I already gave you a shout out. You just got your lead. I bet a great person gave it to you. Yes, Jessica. Back to the lipstick. So I don't remember if this is a limited edition or not. Uh, I'm not 100% sure, but it's MAC S hyphen alarm. So S alarm. And yeah, it's just like a really nice, like, daytime red. I feel like it's a red, whenever I feel like wearing red lipstick in the middle of the day, this is the one that I go for. And it has like a little bit of a sheen to it. It's just like a really pretty nice soft red. If a soft red exists, this is like a soft red. It took me a while to find this color actually. So I'm glad that somebody appreciated it. What do you do to advertise myself? Um, to ad... I'm sorry. I'm rating my cousin being ridiculous. To advertise myself, I would say that my number one Okay, let's let's reverse back for a second because it's a little bit of a complicated question. When I first started doing makeup, it was November, not this past November, the November before. So November, December, January, February, March, April, May, June. So it's been a year, 
damn, it's been a year and seven months since I started doing makeup, like full time. That's so crazy, it's been a while. But when I first started doing makeup, my number one form of advertisement was Instagram. I would make it a point to post every single day on Instagram, sometimes twice a day if I could. Um, I know you guys, I'm sure you guys have noticed, I have not been posting as much. I have been very lucky that I have been able to build the clientele that I have and that I'm, I, I'm as busy as I am with work. Um, but it does affect my ability to post. I would love to post more. Um, however, I have noticed that Instagram does not work as well as it used to when I first started on Instagram. Ever since they changed the algorithm system, basically everybody doesn't see your post. So before, and your first clients were your girls. Yes, you guys were. The way that it is now, as you guys know, the algorithm, it doesn't show a timeline anymore. Like it doesn't show you um, post in the order that they're posted. It shows you post um, like based on what type of pictures you like the most often and which pictures are getting the most likes at the moment. So a lot of times if you post on Instagram, more than half your followers won't even see your post. I've noticed that Instagram story does a lot, a lot better than actual Instagram posts. So like if you guys notice, sometimes I'll post on Instagram, but then I'll post on my Instagram story, like a new post, check it out to see the deets. That way anybody that's interested in actually seeing, you know, what products I use in that makeup look, or if you like that makeup look, or if you want to see that mini tutorial that I posted, you guys know that it's there and can go and see it and check it out. Um, but actual timelines don't work as good as they used to. So if you're trying to build up a clientele or you're trying to build up your following, I would suggest Instagram story, be on Instagram story as much as possible and then use that to send people to your page because getting to your page isn't as easy as it, for your page popping up on people's timelines is not as easy as it used to be back in the day. Um, what other ways of advertising do I use? I post to Facebook sometimes, but I'm gonna be 100% honest. I'm kind of like social media stupid. Like I'm not good at social media. Like I understand Instagram and that's it. I don't understand Twitter. I don't understand Facebook. I don't understand. I have a Facebook business page and like, I don't, I don't know how to use it. I just don't. Um, I am in the process of trying to get a website made so that I can get on other websites like The Knot, um, so I can get a Yelp page, I can get a Google reviews page because things like that are really, really, really helpful, especially if you're interested in getting into like the wedding world and getting into doing makeup in, um, in events and stuff. That's a big way for people to find you. Also, hashtags work really good. Like people think it's so stupid to use hashtags, but hashtags work. You're so official. I try. I try to be official. You have no idea how many clients I've gotten that have been like, hey, I found you through hashtags. So hashtags really, really, really work. Um, if you are again like are trying to get more makeup clients or whatever, look at some of the hashtags that I use. Usually like the area that you're in is good. So like hashtag Miami makeup artist, hashtag New York makeup artist, hashtag New York MUA, you know, things like that. People actually, actually do use hashtags. It's crazy, I had no idea until people started reaching out to me. How about business cards? Did or do you ever pass them out anyway? Basically, um, I, I paid, obviously, to have a logo made. I had a logo that I made myself, which you can totally do it on your own. I just wanted to get something a little bit more professional done, so I paid somebody to get um, a logo done and get my business cards done. I love how they came out, they're beautiful, but I don't hand out my business cards. Like everything, I, I've had a couple people ask me for business cards, like maybe some older clients, but really a lot of um, younger people and a lot of people more from like around my-ish generation, um, we're just like social media, you know? Everything is on social media. So everyone asks me for my Instagram, everyone asks me for my phone number, everyone asks me, you know, for that type of information. I do use the logo that she made me though, cause like I don't really hand out price lists. People will email me and I'll, I'll um, send them like um it's kind of like an e pamphlet if that makes sense and my logo is on there and i have my logo and stuff like that on my contracts i have my logo um things like that is where i have my logo that i paid her to make me but the actual business card that she printed and sent to me although they're beautiful and i love them i don't really hand them out very often to be 100 percent honest maybe that's just me i don't know so the question is, how cool was it to work with Laura Geller? How did they contact you? I have no idea, this is actually a really funny story. So my cousin, Vicky, who is here in this live feed right now, she um, she's like my little helper. She's like my little assistant. She helps me quite a bit. Whenever she's not around, like I die. So she, I wake up one morning and I'm laying in bed and I was like, let me just look through my emails because Vicky answers my emails, that's Vicky. Vicky answers my emails for me, so if you ever email me or Instagram DM me, you're not talking to me, you're actually talking to Vicky. I go, I was going through my email one morning, my emails, and I saw like I got an email from 
I don't remember the lady's name. It was something at Laura Geller Beauty. And I'm like, so I open it. And when I opened it, they were like, oh, we'd like to collab with you. I don't know what, all this stuff. And I thought it was a joke. I called Vicky and I was like, have you seen this email that came in? And Vicky was like, what email? She goes, I'm still in bed. I'm like, look at this email. And I'm like, I think it's a joke. Like, why would somebody, like, that's like spam. Like, why would somebody send me that? Like, that's so random. And then we ended up emailing back and no, it was real. It wasn't a joke. It was legit. So that was that. They just saw my Instagram and they just, I guess, liked my page and wanted to send me over some makeup to put some looks together for them. And that was that. So it was pretty cool. It was cool. Sorry, I'm a 21 ice right now. Is your area pretty competitive? Yes, Miami is like very competitive for makeup, but I've been pretty lucky. I don't know, I'm a very, like if you know me personally, I'm a very not competitive person at all. I'm just not, I'm, I'm, when it comes to things like that, I'm pretty easy going. Um, so when I meet other makeup artists, I've always gotten along with them. I actually work with a lot of makeup artists in the area. Um, I just like to see other people's work. I like to see other people do things. I like to see the type of products that people like. I just think that everything is a learning experience and it's super helpful. Um, but yes, it is competitive around um, Miami. There's a lot of makeup artists around here. Um, but I think it's all about the way that you go about it. If you want to be competitive with it, you can. And if you don't, you don't. You know, you can just, like I said, take everything as a learning experience and learn from each other what you can. And that's it. Who's your favorite makeup artist? Um, my favorite makeup artist. For a long time, my favorite makeup artist was Harouche. I'm obsessed with Harouche. Um, I think she's still my make favorite makeup artist. I really like Harouche. Patrick Ta obviously is awesome. Makeup by Mario is amazing. But I think that my number one is Harouche. It's just the way that she does eyelashes and concealer. I'm obsessed with the way she does eyelashes and concealer. I don't understand it. It's amazing. What lipstick am I wearing? Okay, I answered this a little while ago, but I'll tell you guys again because you probably weren't here. I'm wearing MAC S Alarm. Uh, oh no, I'm, you know, I was saying it's S Alarm. It's called Five Alarm. I'm literally half blind. I can't see. Just joining. Firstly, congratulations on your engagement. Thank you. I love engagement stories. Can you share yours? I have my vlog up from Costa Rica on my channel and I like give my first impression, I guess, like the next morning, like I talk about like when we got engaged and that whole thing. But basically what happened was it was Chris's birthday. Um, and when we went to Costa Rica, we stayed in two different hotels and they were about four hours from each other. So it was a pretty long drive. So we woke up the morning of his birthday in the first hotel. And then we took a car. We had a car pick us up and took us to the second hotel. And since that was the day of his birthday, I left the whole day open because we had like a little private pool and stuff in our room. And I was like, perfect, that way we can get there, we can make dinner reservations, we can chill in the pool, you know, we can make order some food to the room, like just relax, just to have like a nice relaxing day. So when we got to the hotel, um, they do like a private like bungalow dinner. So it's basically like a bungalow that's in the middle of the rainforest and it's all candlelit. So I wanted to book the bungalow dinner for him to surprise him because it was his birthday, obviously. And we're in the little pool there and I'm like, okay, how do I, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, what excuse can I give Chris? I need to get away from him. Like, I needed to get to the front desk because you have to like pre-pick the wine. You have to pre-pick like all of the entrees and stuff, like all the food for the dinner. So I'm like, how do I get away from him? Like, what excuse do I give to get away from him so I can go and plan this for him? We're in the pool and I'm like thinking in my head, I'm like, okay, what can I say, what can I say? And he goes to me, he's like, I have a surprise. And I was like, what? He's like, oh, I booked the bungalow dinner for us tonight. And I was like, oh my God, seriously? Like, I wanted to book it for you. And he was just laughing at me like, haha, I'm faster than you. And I was like, why would you book that for yourself on your birthday? Like, who does that? Whatever. So he's like, okay, you need to go get ready. He kept telling me to get ready and get ready. And I'm like, damn, I've never seen him want me to get ready like so much before. Like, why does he want me to get ready so bad? So I was like, whatever. So I start getting ready and we get to the bungalow. He opened the doors and like on the floor in roses and, in, um, and with candles, it said, I love you. So I'm thinking, I'm like, this is a romantic bungalow dinner. Like they do this for everybody. So I was thinking, I'm like, oh my God, this is so cute. So I went to go look to Chris to be like, how cute is this like little decoration thing they do on the floor that I love you, like, oh, how nice, whatever. So I go to look at him and then all of a sudden, he looked like really white and I was like, I was like, what the heck is wrong with him? And all of a sudden he goes, I have to ask you something. And then in that moment, like I realized what was happening and I was just like, like I wasn't, I was, I was like, and then I was like, Excuse me. So, and it's like, oh, you know, will you marry me? And I was like, of course, of course. And then for like an hour, I was like so in shock that like I couldn't even like talk. Like I literally had no words, which is so weird because I'm not like that. Like I'm not like an overly emotional person. And I was so like overwhelmed with emotion that like I couldn't even talk. It was so dramatic. And then whatever, we had like a few glasses of wine. We kind of ate a little bit and then I like relaxed. I relaxed a little bit and then I started trying to talk to him and every time I would talk, I would just start crying. 
And I was like, we're just so lucky. We're in Costa Rica and you're the love of my life. And I can't believe you proposed to me. And oh my God. And I was like, it was so dramatic, but it was so perfect. And it was like, just, it was just amazing. It was awesome. Show us the ring. Okay, so the ring. You guys wanna see the ring? This is the ring. I haven't really posted any pictures of it. Like my friends and stuff, I've seen it. He did a really good job with the ring. I love it, it's beautiful. It is, um, it's just like a diamond band and then it's just a solid princess cut diamond um, with no halo. So that's what it looks like, it's beautiful. I just wanted something super simple and you know, he, he killed it, he did an amazing job. How was your makeup um, holding up in the very humid Costa Rica? Well, you guys know that I've been loving the Pixie Glow Mist. I've been loving this to set my makeup because it makes you super duper duper dewy. So the first night in Costa Rica, I was like, I want to be like a glowing, beautiful, highlighted goddess. So I used an illuminating primer. I used Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I mixed an illuminator in with the Armani Luminous Silk Foundation. I then used a liquid illuminator on the high points of my face. I topped my bronzer with MAC Gold Deposit. I put powder highlight on top of the, the cream highlight or the liquid highlight and then I set my whole face with this spray that has oil in it and I looked crazy. Cause it is so humid in Costa Rica. Oh my God, it was so bad. The first night at dinner, Chris was like, damn. He's like, babe, what's wrong with your face? And when they say what's wrong with your face, that's when you know. That's when you know it was a disaster. I was like, I can't even Snapchat right now. Like, I look crazy as shit. I looked crazy. I would set really good around this area um, with Laura Mercier powder, not RCMA, because I needed the extra, the extra dryness. Because I would actually get a lot of oil around here. So I would set with a lot of Laura Mercier, and I didn't. I did use this a little bit, but I would just be like, shh, shh, like on the sides of my face. Like I could not put any of this within my T zone at all. I would use um, just like my regular Mario Badescu in the middle of my face and then just use this on the edges, but it actually worked out pretty good. Honestly, like my makeup lasted pretty well. It wasn't too bad. Hi, how do you feel about the milk primer? Got it this month in my Sephora box, but I'm not sure which primer she's talking about. So she's gonna get back to me on that right now. How do you feel about the Urban Decay D Slick setting spray? Um, honestly, I haven't tried the Urban Decay D Slick setting spray just because I've used the other one, like the original setting spray that they brought out and not that I don't like it, I like it, I think it's good, but there's just a lot of other setting sprays that I prefer. Like I think the Milani setting spray is absolutely amazing. Um, the Smashbox primer water is an amazing primer and it's an amazing setting spray. Um, I actually really love the Mario Badescu water, even though it's not supposed to set your makeup, I feel like it does a really good job of like getting rid of all the powder that powdery look on your face and kind of just make everything look more like skin and it's super hydrating, so I love this. Um, I've been using the Pixi Glow Tonic, like I told you, but this is like, everybody won't like this. Like this is literally putting oil on your face. Like if you want to be really glowy, this is good. If you want to be matte, don't even touch this. The Blur Stick. Okay, so that's another product that I haven't tried and let me explain to you why. I was actually in Sephora the other day and I was like, should I get this, should I not? I don't know. So I don't um, really like silicone primers to be 100% honest, and I don't like pore filling primers. Um, I know that's so weird, but in my experience, every time I've tried to use any type of a, of a primer with that consistency, that's like kind of like that silicone feel that's supposed to fill in lines and um, pores and stuff like that, it just messes with the foundation so much. Like when you initially put it on by itself, it looks good, you're like, wow, my pores, you can't see them as much, you can't see my fine lines as much, but as soon as you put foundation on top, a lot of the times foundation doesn't work well on top of it and it kind of breaks up the foundation and it doesn't look, it just doesn't look good. It looks like, you know like when your skin is extremely overly dry and you put on makeup and it's like breaking up on your skin? To me, that's what always happens every time I try to use a primer like that. So I kind of steer clear of any type of a silicone primer when I really want to hide my pores or I see that my pores are showing a lot. My favorite thing to do is to just use my foundation, use my normal primer. You guys know that I love the hangover primer. I think this is amazing. Whether you have oily skin, whether you have dry skin, this is the bomb. I love it. Um, so I'll just use my regular primer, my foundation, all that stuff. And then what I'll do is I'll take the It Cosmetics. Um, I, what is it called? It's called no, Pores No More. Thank you. They make the Pores No More powder from It Cosmetics. It comes in the loose powder and it comes in the pressed powder. 
Um, don't buy the loose powder. The loose powder is not as good. The press powder is amazing. So I just go on with like a kabuki brush. Yes, yeah, so I go on with like a really like dense brush. This isn't even, I use a different brush. I use like a really dense brush. And I go, I, I go into it like this. And then when I apply it to my face, I press it into the areas that I want to cover up. And it literally, number one, it mattifies, which I like because this is the only area that I tend to get a little bit of oil. So I press it in really good there and it does a really good job of mattifying that little area. Um, Cause even though I like to glow, I don't like to have oil on my face. Obviously nobody does. So I'll press that in right here and it gets rid of any appearance of pores. And it also um, mattifies. And I actually really like that powder too for fine lines. Like before I had my smile lines filled, I would always use that powder to fill in. Like to, but the trick is you have to press it in. You can't like swipe it. You have to press it in with a brush. And I'll put that on my smile lines and it would really help with my smile lines like quite a bit. Did getting the fillers done hurt? Yes. Yes, getting fillers done hurt. Puff is laying on the couch with Chris. But Olivia's here. Look at little Livy. The little savage. Hi, baby. Do Chris's makeup. Do Chris's makeup. He actually probably would let me do that, to be 100% honest. He probably would let me do his makeup. He's pretty, like, whatever about stuff like that. He doesn't really care. The voiceover, I'm telling you, like, Chris, is, if you guys ever meet Chris in person, like, Chris is really funny in person. But, like, if you put pressure on him, like, that I'm like, oh my god, you have to do, um, what's it called? You have to do a voiceover. He'll get nervous and he won't be funny. Like, he won't. I know he won't. But I'll ask him. Where's your bracelet from? This is from Looks by Low. It's a boutique in PSN, which is, like, down the street from my house. This dog knows how to open drawers. So she opens my makeup drawers and she takes, she knows which drawer the beauty blenders are in. And she opens the drawer and eats all my beauty blenders. So give me a second because she's taking them. This is what the dog does. You guys saw my sweatpants? <laughs> What's your favorite sheet mask and what type of skin do you have? I would say I always had really dry skin, but I would say that my skin has kind of changed and I have more combination skin. I don't know if it's because my skincare has gotten better, so now it's like more normal and it's not as dry, but I definitely have combination skin. My favorite sheet masks, I actually really love the Sephora ones. The Sephora ones are really good. Um, I used to love the green tea mask when I was breaking out, but I haven't really been using that one lately just because it's a little bit too harsh sometimes. Like I feel like it's like really intense sometimes. Um, so I've been really liking the algae one when I'm breaking out. The algae one's really good and I love the rose mask. Like the rose mask is really nice. Um, I usually do that one like on Fridays, like right before the weekend, just to make sure my skin is really nice and hydrated. And then, you know, obviously usually on the weekends you kind of go out, you drink. So I like to do that one on Mondays also to kind of rehydrate my skin and just bring it back to life again. Help it be more, a little more bright and a little bit more moisturized. Favorite bronzer? Because every bronzer makes me look orange. <laughs> My favorite bronzers, the e.l.f. bronzer palette. They actually have two now. This is the one in Bronzed Beauty, which is the lighter one. They have one for deeper skin tones, which is awesome that they brought that out. So this is what it looks like. It's just a little quad. You guys have seen me use this a bajillion times. I love it because this, it has two matte bronzers and two shimmery bronzers. So I actually usually mix these three together. I don't even touch this one. Like every time I go through one of these, this one always gets thrown away. Cause it just is a little bit dark and it has like a little bit of a reddish undertone. I don't know where it is. But NARS Laguna bronzer is my other favorite bronzer. Um, for like the last two years, those have been like my go-to bronzers. I, I, I always try other ones out, but I never like them as much as I like those two. Elf Bronzer Palette and Laguna Bronzer are my two favorites. Okay guys, so thanks so much for tuning in. I hope I was able to answer a lot of your questions. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did like um, this whole little Q&A thing and you guys have more questions that you wanna ask me, just comment below and let me know. Um, I know that I did this one on Instagram story and I know a lot of people here on YouTube don't have Instagram, not everyone has Instagram. So if you want me to do another q and A, I I can do it maybe here on YouTube. Um, maybe you guys can tweet me stuff. I'm not a big tweeter, as I was saying. Like, I'm not very good at social media. But um, if you want to suggest a different way to do it and you want me to do one here, just comment below. Let me know how, and I'd love to do it. So thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. This was so fun. Um, and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.